Come on, one last guy. Get him! Get him! There we go. Okay, guys. Welcome back. Now, there isn't much to discuss over here in this part of the Empire. We do have an occasional rebel force to deal with. Actually, a couple, but hardly worth mentioning. The grand scheme of things, they will be crushed, and no one will remember who they are, or what their names were, or why they even rebelled. They won't even have a footnote in the history books telling of our glory. Uh, we also seem to have run out of black market merchants to have the secret police take care of, at least in uh, these parts of the Empire. And, I mean, that's really it. I mean, there's not going to be much ever again, really, to say about these parts, simply because things have all been dealt with over there. Over here in the east, obviously, things are very different. We've got a couple of generals here who are about to finish up mapping out the desert that we will be able to then disband their troops and kind of move on. This is all Petra, or territory belonging to, I guess, the province that Petra is a part of, Arabia. Let's see, now Parminion has actually moved on from Persepolis, though he hasn't gone very far yet. His troops are fully replenished, though. They've all got their armor and weapon upgrades, so he's just going to go right through here and go to Pura. There's another settlement over here, Quetta, so he'll probably just go over here and then head north. I do have a spy in this direction, but I don't think there's any actual, like, settlements over here, I guess. Because if you, like, look at the coast here... Like, there's these trees that are blocking off everything, but more importantly, there's this rivers, or these rivers. Well, actually, I guess that's one river and then a tributary. But anyway, it seems to be blocking off all progress in this direction. Because when I take my spy, you can see he can walk here, but then the moment I go across the river, it turns to an X. Actually, it's even an X up here, though that might just be because it's so far away he can't reach it. Because, yeah, he should be able to walk over here, for example. It's also possible that all of this territory is just part of, like, one settlement. Because, like, I do see there's a port here. Taxila. Yeah, you see, and it's not part of Bactria. But there must be, like, one more settlement, like, somewhere over here that I would have to take, too. And presumably it would be called Taxila. So anyway, Permineon's going to go in that direction and then head north. Alexander... I think when we left him last, he was at Tabe, and so he was heading over to Ekbatna, and a couple of interesting things happened. First off, the Persians sent a pretty substantial force over here. I think Alexander has got them cornered. I actually can't remember now if I've already attacked them once and they've retreated there, or if they were already there at the beginning. I sort of hope I already attacked them, because otherwise I imagine they'll retreat, and then I don't know if I'll be able to catch them or not. But as you can see, uh, we also have enough vision over the land here to be able to see into Dahe territory. Or at least I assume it's Dahe territory because, well, it was at one point for sure. But also, if you look at the border here, you'll notice like the color, there's like the, the purple of my territory. Because apparently this is part of Tabe's province, uh, Parthia. But then there's this dark color here, which I believe is supposed to be the Dahe. So I assume it's Dahe territory. And yet, as you can see, this Persian force is actually besieging the city. Which leads me to believe that surely it must be a rebel city, right? Because if I go to uh, Diplomacy, the Dahe are allied with the Persians. Their only enemy is me, Macedon. Alexander the Great. Or Alexander, wait, what's his current title now? Alexander, Alexander the Killer. That's right, I forgot. He had he had changed, uh, his title had changed. Alexander the Killer. So, like, they surely can't be fighting each other. They're not at war with each other. They're even allies. So this must be a rebel settlement, and I just can't see it. But then I don't know why the border isn't, like, rebel colors, because I thought it would be, like, a, like a gray color, kind of like, uh, like this rebel flagship here. So anyway, I'm very curious as to see, like, I basically want to hurry up, kill this guy, kill, or take over Akbatna, 
And then get my spy over there, because you see my spy can't go around Ekbatna. So I want to uh, take the city and then quickly get him over there, because I want to see, surely that must be a rebel city. They can't be at war with each other. They just can't be. Doesn't make any sense. So, anyway, um, I believe that's it. Let's see, nothing's really happening at Tabe. That's where Alexander's backup army is. The only the peasants are the actual garrison here. There's yes, Parminion's little backup army as well. My lord. But yeah, I think that that is basically it. So let's go ahead and attack Otanes of uh, Apaotanan. Look, I'm, I'm not even going to try any further. Let's just go get him. Uh, let's see, just a couple of archer units, the Mardians there and the Immortals there. I'm actually deliberately keeping an eye out now for the, the Immortals whenever they show up, just so that I remember. No, no, no. It may say a Spearman. They may even look like Spearmen, but I know they fire uh, bows in battle, so you have to keep an eye on that. All right, but anyway, this is a pretty sizable battle, so let's just let them have it. Okay, guys, welcome to the battle. Oh, they're really throwing their cavalry around the flanks there. Good thing I had my phalanges kind of form up on the flanks as well. Oh, that is the general. Okay, go ahead and fire at him, actually. Go right ahead. There's Hyrcanians on the flanks over there, and then we've got Peltis over there. Let's have these guys fire on the Peltis, or actually the archers, I guess. You fire on the Hyrcanians, and you fire on the Peltis over there. All right, and the Hypaspis are throwing as well. Oh, you know, most of those are actually just... These are these are not, like, uh, melee units at all. So I think I can just charge out there now and send some of them screaming into retreat. Oh, but it looks like they're now coming back. They're withdrawing. Oh, um, I should probably put you guys on guard mode. Alright, get over here and see if we can catch more of that cavalry. Of those guys, Peltis. All right, yes. You guys, go get them. You guys, come here and get them, and then let's have the general Alexander and the companions go after the spearmen, because I know how badly that can go. So we want our best cavalry to take care of them. And they're routing. All right, goody. Now go get those Persian infantry as well. And they are also instantly routing. Excellent. 
And yes, I, you can see that there's a bunch of like little graphical glitches on the battlefield. I'm not sure what's causing that. It might just be this battlefield, because I don't think I've observed that in any past battles. Yeah, you can see you can see it here too. It could just be a problem with this map, of course. Um. You turn around and go get them. It's funny that they say that, like, I've already kind of driven them from the battlefield. You see, this is why I told the archers to fire at will, because I figured there might be a unit or two that just kind of heads back in that direction. So maybe the archers will be able to take them out, because the cavalry is a bit far away. Alright, did you get your targets? You get your targets? There must be some still left there. Okay, nope, that looks like all of them. Come on, one last guy. Get him! Get him! There we go. This victory surely they work, not that of mortals like us. All right, excellent, excellent. They broke pretty quickly on the phalanges, and once their infantry were mostly taken care of, that was kind of the end of the battle there. Right at the beginning. Uh, let's see, the cavalry did very well, as one might expect, even if most of their kills were of men who were already fleeing and routing. But you see, the phalanges did very well, too, and obviously they didn't chase anyone, really. I don't think they moved from their positions. But, like, they, they got 103, they got 91, 89... They managed to break their opponents pretty quickly. These Hippaspis would have done their damage with javelins, so they would never have even been involved like directly in melee fighting, and the same with the archers. Still, very nice. And even like the 29 that we suffered there among the allied cavalry is perfectly acceptable, especially considering the circumstances. All right now, if we look at the enemy, you see they, they did hardly any damage. The Kardakes probably did that damage to our cavalry. General did... Even the general didn't do all that well, though, actually. Just ten. Ten guys there. And I think we did kill him, if I remember correctly. Yep, alright, well. That was it, so let's take it back to the campaign map. Alright, so now let's grab Alexander here and see if we can possibly... Let's see, can we place Ekbatna under siege? Answer no. I, I can't remember how it works exactly, but I thought maybe if Alexander puts Ekbatna under siege, the spy is then able to pass through it, and I wanted to really try and quickly get over there and see what's going on. But um, looks like we will have to wait for a bit. I don't want him to try and, like, I assume... I could put him inside the city and then have him come out the other side, like just by having him directly spy on it, but it's only a 50% chance of success. That's, I mean, that's not exactly great or anything. And I don't have a quick way of, oh wait, I do have a spy down here that I could train if he were to die in that endeavor. I don't know, you know what, we'll just, we'll just wait. It's not, it's not important that it happened like this very turn or anything. All right, but anyway, that was the only battle I had for you guys now, so I will just bring you back as more of interest occurs. Okay, guys, welcome back. And perhaps I spoke a little bit too soon when I was saying that nothing of interest is going to happen back here in at the, the beginnings of our great empire, or Alexander's great empire. But um, there were actually now four rebel groups, like, in this area here, and we eliminated one of them... This one's going to be eliminated next turn, as is probably that one. But then we still got this big one that just popped up the last turn. Well, big, comparatively speaking. Five units of various filthy barbarians that will have to be eliminated. We also did have a another black market merchant who had to be eliminated. But our 
Secret police took care of him without any issue. Let's see, I believe that is actually really it. I think we found another couple of black market merchants, but they were all swiftly eliminated by our secret police who are stationed throughout the Empire now. We just about have this area done being surveyed by our generals and watchtowers placed, and so we're actually going to make a ship here at Karmana to just take them back across here instead of having them go, like, all the way around or anything. I don't think I'm going to keep the troops. I mean, I guess... I mean, I have space for them. I probably could keep those troops if I wanted to. I just don't feel I really need them very much. Huh. Well, I guess I'll, I'll consider it. I'll consider it. Now, uh, Parminion's army has placed Pura under siege, which this is in Gudrosia, which I believe... This is like the Gudrosian Desert, I think. Like this area along the coast here. Well, I guess probably it extends up here into the north. But the reason I mention the coast specifically, though, is because this is one of uh, Alexander's blunders, really. Because uh, after he had taken over territory in India, he was coming back to Babylon, I think. And he was crossing the Gudrosian Desert, but there were issues getting water and food. Specifically, I think his navy was supposed to be supplying him with food. But they got stuck for some reason. I think it was like storms or something. And they couldn't chase after him to, you know, keep his army supplied. And uh, so a lot of them died actually crossing the desert here. Which is not going to happen this time. Mostly because Alexander's army is far away anyways. But um, I guess I shouldn't be calling this Parminion's army anymore. Yes, because unfortunately Parminion is now dead. Not in battle or anything. So I guess technically he did have one final fight against that small rebel force that I, I didn't even show you guys that one. But that was apparently his last battle because uh, he died of natural causes before we could quite get to the siege here. It's so now Parminion is gone. By the way, I've been keeping somewhat of an eye on Alexander's titles. But I haven't really been doing the same with Parminion, so I don't know if I mentioned it in any past battle, but he was actually known as Parminion the Butcher at the end of his life. Which perhaps is appropriate, considering how much he butchered his way through our enemies. Let's see, I think he basically was the one who fought the Scythians in all cases, because he took Byzantium and he took Tineus as well. And then after fighting here in Asia Minor, he took Azra, or Azara, to finish them off. They did have rebel forces here that then had to be taken care of, but, you know, they became rebels, so whatever, it's fine. So, he did all of the fighting against the Scythians, along with some fighting here against the Persians. He won that magnificent victory at Babylon, the one where he was besieging the city, but also being attacked by forces outside, while Alexander's army stood by and just watched, you know, cheering them on, I'm sure, and <laughs> just giving them moral support. Yeah, and then fought his way down here. Well, I think Alexander did most of this fighting, though I think the Parminion took Carmana, I think. And I think Alexander took Persepolis. And actually, Parminion did take Susa, because he actually took it before he took Babylon. He actually went around Babylon at first. So yes, a great a great career for a great general, and I, uh, a better end for him than the one that the real Parminion got. I already mentioned in the past that uh, Alexander basically had him killed, but... We did not. He he died of natural causes. And his glory in this alternate history will... Oh, what's the word for it? I don't want to say ring throughout history, because that would take away from probably Alexander the Great. But not everyone knows Parminion, even in our timeline. If you know anything about Alexander's like generals, then you know who Parminion is. So, anyway. We will miss you, Parminion the Butcher. And now we need a, a new general to uh, to take command. Right now we do have Polycratus of Olympia. He was actually just already in the army. And so I took an allied cavalry unit from here and put it in the army to just fill out the army. But he was already the general, or I guess the backup general. But um, I think I'm actually going to replace him with Olganus. And that's simply because he has a higher command star over here. These, by the way, are just like a group of generals that have just been piling up kind of in the rear over here. And so I just went looking to see like who had the most command stars and it looks like it's Olganus over here. 
I mean, even, uh, let's see, I think Eumenes, the black, has three. So he's actually slightly lower himself. But anyway, unfortunately, we will have to now win a great victory in Parminion's name in honor of his memory. Uh, well, not unfortunately. I was actually going to say something else. It would be quite fortunate if we won a great victory in Parminion's memory. So, let's go ahead and do that now, because it's time to take Ekbatna. I actually do have a decent garrison here. Uh, no archers or anything, but just a bunch of Persian infantry, some Kardakes. I guess I should say they have a great number of men here, but not necessarily the best quality. They don't have a great variety of units, but I am kind of concerned about the Peltis. Oh, they're going to throw their spears right on us from the walls and kill a bunch of my guys, aren't they? That's what they did, I think, at, uh, yeah, at Babylon, actually. I lost a bunch of Hippaspis to the, the Peltis on the walls before the Hippaspis then got up there and slaughtered them all. Which is what I think is going to happen this time, so let's get right into the battle. Okay, guys, welcome to the battle. Now, much to my surprise, the enemy is not exactly defending the walls. They've got just basically this one unit of Peltis up here on the walls, and that's it. So we're actually only going to send two of our ladders forward. This one here. Oh, wait a minute. Get, get over here, fellas. I want them to be as far away from them as possible. And also, they might not get shot by the towers if they go up there, too, actually. And we've got this one going up here, which also I don't think should be shot by the towers. Or if they do, it'll be somewhat brief. And they can actually then take the gates to let us in. It definitely had plenty of infantry, so I thought there would be a more substantial defense of the walls. But it looks like that's just not going to be the case. Um, in which case, I might as well have these guys kind of come back over here. And the same with these guys. Just get over here. You won't be needed up on the walls. All right. Have you shot? All right. See, we only lost a couple of them. And they should get up on the walls here momentarily. You know what, in fact, I think it'll be a minute before we even have any real serious fighting, so why don't I just bring you guys back uh, once we start fighting the enemy. Okay, guys, welcome back. As you can see, the uh, Paspis are coming over here, so I'm going to send in the Paspis to Ow. Just immediately killed that guy. <laughs> immediately to take them out. Now, you may notice... Also, that there are some more graphical glitches occurring again. Now, I did fight a couple more battles since the last one. And I didn't have any glitches at all on those battlefields. So I don't know if it's because, like, night battles have suddenly started this new trend. Because I guess the, the battles that I did before weren't night battles. Uh, the last couple that I tested, I mean. So it might be something bugged with night battles. Though I'm not sure what could have happened. Because I don't think the game has had any updates. And I don't think, uh... Oh, wow, look at that. <laughs> and I haven't, like, updated Reshade or anything like that either. So I'm not sure why I would suddenly be having graphical glitches. Right, get, get over here. Come on. Get onto the gate. Back here. Why don't you slightly come through the gate? How about that? All right, so now the gate has been seized, and it looks like we are going to have some fighting here for them to hold it. And, oh, they've got Peltis right there, too. Hmm. The problem is, is that they could throw their spears at us as we come through the gate, which would be unfortunate. How are you guys doing? I was going to say, wait a minute, what is this reloading here? You guys do not get to fire or throw your javelins. You get to die by my Hippaspis. Oh, the Peltis are using up their ammo on the Hippaspis now. Actually, that's a good thing. 
I mean, not for the Hippaspis, obviously, but for our Phalanges as they come in, it will be a good thing. And actually, I think what we can do here is put our Hippaspis over here. Oh. Oh, they're already throwing spears back. Even better. Go ahead and do that. I'm actually not sure why you're doing that, though. <laughs> because, like, didn't you still have guys, yeah, coming up the walls and stuff? Whoa, what the heck is going on here? How are you guys able to throw your spears? All right, you know what? Stop and throw your own spears at them. I think we should be able to kill more of them a lot faster. <laughs> there we go. That is what we like to see. Oh, the Hippaspis are still throwing. All right, anyway, um, let's go ahead and get a couple of phalangists in there. How about these two? Make sure they take the gate, basically. Right, there we go. They are now eliminated. Well, we might as well have them... I don't know. There we go. Over here. Then we'll have these guys just kind of line up well, go, go, go. Go, go, go. over here. Alright, and here come the phalanges. Okay, there are the peltis, but they've mostly been eliminated, so that's probably fine. And fight. Oh, also, you guys... Oh, you're out of ammunition. Okay, well, you guys don't fire it well because <laughs> you don't want them fighting. Oh, and they're running. Well, away you go then. All right, let's bring in Alexander. And we can have him go down the street there and eliminate those Peltis while the Phalanges push up. Uh, let's see. Let's also bring in the... Archers. Here, you know what? Let's have this unit of pikemen over here. And the other unit can just kind of form up over here. Hurry up and get in here, form up, and then we'll send you over there after the archers, or the peltes. I'm afraid you are all doomed now. All right, now let's get the phalanges forward. And that flickering is really annoying. <laughs> Alright, are the archers in here? They are. Alright, so let's have the phalanx go, let's say, that far forward. And then we can line up the archers basically behind them. So let's say here... Here. Not sure how useful this will actually be, though. Uh, it would be nice to just, like, land a whole bunch of volleys, like, right into that, that bunch of them right there, but, um, that seems a tad unreasonable. Like 
Because I don't think... Well, no, the archers in this game... In the remastered version, they do have plunging shots. So I guess we could drop some arrows into there, couldn't we? Assuming they're within range. And it looks like they are. All right, you know what? Put, put a couple of volleys in there, and let's see what kind of damage it actually does. I mean, to be honest, they might actually just start moving. <laughs> it does seem to be doing some damage there. Oh, stop! Alright, stop firing it well. I said stop. Oh, you just killed a couple of my own guys. And away they go. Alright, go ahead and fire at will again, because now it looks like they're not coming forward. Oh, now they are. Stop, stop, stop. You guys are not getting through those spears very easily. It looks like they are going to push their way through in a moment. Oh, and there most of them go. I guess you guys stop firing. I was having them fire over here just to see if we could do some damage, and I guess we probably could, but we might as well just have them keep charging forward right onto the spears of the phalanges here. In fact, no, I guess I could have the phalanges push forward, but that would mean the archers would have even less chance to fire at the enemy as they come around the corner there. Oh, Fire it well. Might as well let them shoot them down as they flee. I assume once these two units are eliminated, they would then start sending the rest of them forward. Oh, and they're immediately broken again. All right, excellent. You see, this is good, because that means they'll just never come close to the phalanges, and so we can just leave our archers firing at them. And I hope that means that we'll also start putting in more units. It doesn't really look like it. Alright, you know what? Stop firing it well. Let's see if we can just have the phalanges kill off the remainder of these guys. Oh, and it looks like they may very well commit another unit. Okay, you guys go ahead and stop there. Stop firing, because you're now killing my own guys again. <laughs> um, I did tell you guys to stop firing, so why are you still firing? And into the backs of my own guys, no less. 
Okay, seriously, stop firing. Why are you still firing? Pretty sure uh, more of our casualties for in the Phalanges are from our archers than it is from the enemy. And the archers are doing a good bit of damage to them, sure, but at the same time... Oh, I should tell them to fire. At the same time, I don't want them to keep hitting the Phalanges either. And they're broken. Good, good. Okay, they're wavering. Alright, stop firing. Actually, stop firing. Alright, they are now bringing another unit forward, which all these units are exhausted because the AI has just been running them around this whole time. Alright, go ahead and fire it well again because it looks like, yes, they're sending more of them forward. Broken. Good. So I think only the Kardakes will actually make it to the Phalanges. Alright, go ahead and stop firing. Or... Wait, are they gonna... Are they coming over here or not? Okay, yep, here they- oh wait, no, no. That's the Persian infantry who are charging, not the Kardakes. And they are immediately fleeing. Uh-oh, they're gonna push through the spears here in a minute, I think. Oh, they are wavering, though, so they could also just get pushed right back. All right, fire at will again. All right, they've, yep, they've only got one unit that's actually, like, at mostly full strength. Charging forward again. You now it occurs to me, maybe I should have sent some some guys around here, but I don't know. This is just this just seems effective. Alright. Stop firing. And just look at those numbers drop. And there they go again. <laughs> and after, when we go to the, like, after battle screen, this phalangist unit is going to have, like, hundreds of casualties, like, just on their own. It's, like, going to be comparable to, like, what the archers are going to have. Oh, you know, I really should just check and make sure that, like, no one's coming around. Okay, no one- no one's attacking from the rear or anything. Okay, very good. This is kind of unfair, though. <laughs> and to be honest, like, I don't know, it's just I think it's pretty normal for me to send, like, troops around the other side, or at least just cavalry, even, even if I don't send, like, infantry. But for some reason this time, I just- I don't know. It just seemed like this this was the thing to do.
Yep, and it looks like they cannot actually make it to the phalanges anymore. Their morale is not high enough. We're just gonna run through our the rest of our arrows now until either they're dead or I guess they'll have so few men left that obviously we can just push in and kill the rest of them with the phalanges. Actually, as enjoyable as this is for me, I realize you guys probably aren't enjoying this as much. So I'll uh, just bring you guys back once either they're all dead from the arrow fire or I've had to push forward with the phalanges to kill off the remainder of them. Okay, guys, welcome back. So the archers actually aren't quite out of ammunition. In fact, the one on the end here still has quite a bit, but um, he hardly gets in any shots anyways. And the other archer unit is basically out of ammo, so I figured we might as well just send in the phalanges to take them out. Alright, here he comes, the one guy in his unit. And he's down. Right now, Turner. Oh, wait, he's not dead! Unbelievable! Alright, you killed him this time, right? Oh, wait, no, there's, st there's still a couple of guys here! Kill them! Like, holy smokes, just kill them already. That's like. Right. Now kill them. Um, you can lower your spears. The enemy show their true virtue. They are not soldiers, only frightened rabbits running from our men. <laughs> See a whole line of phalanges just fall over. All right, come on, stab him! Stab him! There we go. This is a victory fit for the gods. A day of triumph to mark with a song or two. Uh, just look at the pile of enemy bodies here. Less than 100 casualties, or 1,700 losses. Though, let's see, 98 casualties, right? So let's see. I believe this is 108 casualties in total. So we killed about 10 of our own guys with arrow fire. That's a little unfortunate, but I guess it's not as bad as it could have been. And of course the Peltis did the most damage to our poor Hippaspis unit, because they suddenly decided, you know what? Why are we sitting here fighting the Hippaspis with daggers? Or swords? I, I can't remember what their other weapon was. I think it was like little daggers, or maybe a short sword. So they just went, alright, let's start throwing our javelins! And then we had that little javelin duel. Which actually, um, where are the Hippaspis? Yeah, okay. They almost killed double what they took, but at the same time, ugh, there's such a better, I think, melee unit compared to the Peltists, I mean, that they would have, it wouldn't have been even close to that if they had just, you know, been able to melee them the whole time. But oh well, let's take this back to the campaign map. Yeah, okay, you people of Ekbot. No, you're not fooling me. You're not fooling me. Exterminate the lot of them. You're happy with my rule, or Alexander's rule? Now you're very happy with his rule. Because, like, most of that happiness, I'm sure, was just coming from... Well, first off, the size of Alexander's army, but also Alexander himself has considerable influence on the happiness of the population. And he's not going to stick around, so we definitely need to do that. We will slaughter them all, or we have slaughtered them all, rather, in honor of Parminion. <sighs> May he look on from the afterlife with pride upon the accomplishments of the Macedonian Empire and the future accomplishments of the Empire. All right, but now that we've taken Edbatna, let's put the scout through here. Ah, okay, so it is a rebel city. Okay. Whoops. Oh, I didn't even realize that I could do that. Not that I think I'd, I want to, but anyway, I guess that that's a thing now. Huh. 
I think that's something you can do in later Total War games. Like, in fact, I think that's something I have done in Warhammer 3. In my, my co-op campaign with Slayer. I don't think you can do it in the original Rome one, but I guess maybe they just added it for the, the remastered version. All right, but anyway, yes, that, that fully answers my question then, because otherwise, like, that would be like a serious bug if somehow, like, allies were able to go to war with each other, but... And that doesn't look like, like, rebel colors, but I don't know, maybe I'm just not paying proper attention to it. Of course, that also does ask the question then, where exactly are the Dahe? Because if that was their settlement, I guess they must have another one just somewhere over, like, over here. Because I assume these are all still Persian. So there just it must be another Dahe settlement somewhere over here that we'll have to take to destroy them. All right, but anyway, uh, that was it for now. So I will just bring you guys back as more of interest occurs.